Welcome all you Plus Two Comedy Modifiers to another episode of the Plus Two Comedy Podcast. I'm your host as always, TV's Noah Hulhan. And before we get to our fantastic episode, I have to explain what's going on. Uh, this is the episode. This is going to be uh, one of our rare solo Noah episodes uh, where I just kind of talk into a snowball mic and uh, you choose to listen. Uh, it's not going to be our normal type of podcast. Basically... We had to cancel last week at the last moment. We lost our guest. And on top of that, Will is currently in uh, Detroit, I think. Not Detroit. No, he's over in Seattle. Yeah, th- those are similar cities. He's in Seattle for a con. So I didn't have my co-host. I didn't have my guest. So this is all that's left. So it's uh, it's just me today. It's my birthday. I have the day off. So I'm going to spend my birthday talking to you guys, the Plus Two Comedy Modifiers, about what's going on with Plus Two Comedy. So there's a lot to talk about. Let's talk about first uh, the podcast itself. We have past 200 episodes. Uh, this will be a bonus episode, so this won't count towards the continuity, which is a weird thing I decided to do for some reason. But the podcast uh, is currently at Gamer's Vault. I'm very happy with it. It's a lot of fun to do still. Right now, we have 210 official episodes of the Plus Two Comedy Podcast. However, if you head on over to our Podbean page, you'll see that there's actually 240 episodes that have been uploaded. So that includes things like Character Select Showcases, the Slash Fiction World Championships. There's a few episodes of another podcast called Keeping the Fabe, which unfortunately died, which was one of my favorite things to do. And of course, these solo episodes where I just kind of hang out and talk to you guys. Now, one of the questions that we've been getting uh, is what happened to episode 200? Episode 200 was planned to be just this laid back episode where me and Will uh, just kind of talked about Plus Two Comedy. Like, we were going to be our own guests on the, the podcast, and we were just going to talk about where we've been, where we're going. Basically this, but with Will here. And we were going to do the top ten uh, events of Plus Two Comedy, and also the our favorite episodes of the show. Uh, unfortunately, it's really hard to just get together and hang out these days. Uh, me and Will uh, are always busy. So it's tough to get them to just come over here and uh, and hang out for a bit. Uh, so we just let kind of episode 200 be whatever episode 200 would happen to land on. And it happened to be uh, the Geeky Kink event. And uh, so it, they weren't trying to give them like special treatment by giving them episode 200. We were just like, ah, eh, we'll let it go by. We won't make it a huge milestone episode or anything like that. So that's why that happened. We still want to do that episode where we count down our favorite moments uh, since we've been a group for a really long time. Uh, But I think that'll end up being an on the road. So next time we're on the road, we will probably count down our favorite moments. So look forward to that next time we have a con that's kind of far away. More on cons coming up later. Uh, Another thing about the show, though, that I kind of want to bring up to you, the fans, is uh, when I started this podcast... uh, there was a few rules that I kind of put in place for myself. Uh, Rule number one is I didn't want to be like any other podcast. So while most podcasts are done, you know, in a garage or in a basement, I wanted mine to be a live show. That's why we do it at a comic book store. I know that's something that we kind of make fun of these days because it's a weird choice to do. But we always wanted to have an aspect of we are live. So that's why we did that. So that was always one of the rules. Uh, The other rules, I always wanted a guest, which over the years we've had many great guests. Uh, I mean, we're, we're 200 episodes in, over 200 episodes in, which means we're over four years in on the podcast. If you count weeks, you don't have to do the exact math. Just, you know, take my word on it. And my rule was no repeat guests. Uh, I I was trying to make sure that every episode was new and fresh and I was talking to a new person and finding out what made them a nerd. So for 210 episodes, we've only had a few repeat guests. So shout out to them. Shout out to Derek Badichek. Shout out to Jeff Stormer, who comes on whenever I just need him. I'm like, yeah, he's my um, my Alec Baldwin to my Rosie O'Donnell. Where it's just like, ah, I need a person. Man, no one's going to get that reference. But whenever I need a person, 
he's he's the person I call. It's like Jeff, come on, get on the show. So uh, shout outs to him. And uh, I'm trying to think. I, I think we've had Dan Scully on twice because we had him on for Movie Movie. So a few other people have snuck in. Uh, oh, and Ian Rubin. Ian Rubin has done the show twice. Uh, now that we're we're so far into the show, uh, I'm I'm willing to break that rule now. So uh, if there's anyone out there that you were like, man, this was a great episode of the podcast, and you'd like to see back on the show, send us a message. Uh, plus two comedy at gmail dot com, or hit me up on the Twitter. I'm at TV's Noah. That's a thing I never promote enough on this show. At TV's Noah is my Twitter. Feel free to send a message, and we'll try to bring some people back. Uh, because I'm running out of people. Like it, it's at the point where I just kind of scam uh, Kickstarter <laughs> and uh, you know whatever's local and like desperate to get people on the show because uh, I've run out of friends. So. <laughs> If there's someone you'd like to see on the show or hear on the show, now see now we're a, we're a video podcast now. Uh, if you'd like to see on the show, be sure to let us know, and we will try to make that happen. Uh, because the show is for you guys. There, there's a a lovely community of you guys that have been loyal to this show for a really long time, and thank you to you guys because I wouldn't make this show if nobody listened. But people do listen, so thank you so much for uh, always listening to the show and downloading it. It does mean a lot. And I got a little choked up there for a moment. It's my birthday. I'm in a, I'm in an emotional state. But uh, thank you so much for listening. So that's what's going on right now uh, with the show. But uh, let's talk cons. Uh, we do have a few cons coming up uh, that are confirmed. There's a few that I actually can't talk about, which is super cool for us now. The fact that we're like, yeah, you were booked, but you can't say anything. It's like, yeah, we're that important <laughs> that we're secret guests now. Uh, but uh, two things I will say that are coming up are John Con. John Con is a fantastic con, and you know I I plug these cons uh, a lot before the the podcast starts. I'm always talking about you know be sure to see us at this. John Con is a very special con to us. Uh, it is in Baltimore, Maryland. It's at Johns Hopkins University, and they're one of the cons that that treat us like headliners, which we always appreciate. And this is one of the cons we have the most fun at. This is the one where we're kind of just up to do anything. Uh, at this con, we did uh, we we ate one of those like army packs and we filmed it. So that's somewhere on the internet if you want to see that. Uh, it's just me panicking as I eat old fruit. So if you want to check that out, we also did and it's on our feed. It's one of our bonus episodes, the Plus Two Comedy Game Show, which is a thing we've never done again. So they let us experiment. It's a lot of fun. And we also play a lot of board games at it. So if you ever just want to hang out with us, this is probably the best place to just hang. Like, this is the one of the few cons that doesn't feel like work for us. Uh, I've said many times that I have trouble relaxing. Uh, I don't like doing anything for myself that's not considered work. This is why when I play video games, I stream it. This is why when I have conversations with Will in the car, we record them. It's I have trouble uh, breaking away from work and being like, all right, this is a time where I'm going to just enjoy myself. I have trouble doing that. And John Con is the perfect, like, I'm at a con, so I'm working, so I can sit here and I can play Pandemic for an hour, and it feels so good. So please come to John Con. Uh, usually, I'm not sure if it's true this year, but usually it's pay what you want to get in. I think technically you could get in for free, but if you want... Uh, oh, oh, here we go. Uh, we feel that attendees should be free to decide how much they're willing to contribute for registration. So while we recommend a $10 donation, you may pay as much or as little as you wish. Of course, every dollar you choose to donate will be spent on future John Con events. So there you go. So if you're in the Baltimore area or you feel like getting away... Come to Johns Hopkins, hang out with us. It's a great time. It's April 6th through the 8th uh, down at Johns Hopkins University. Uh, I'm also happy to announce we don't have a schedule yet, but we will be going to Zenkai Con. Uh, unfortunately, there will be no Cosplay Pro Wrestling this year. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, cosplay Pro Wrestling is great and something we'll be talking about a little bit more in the future of this podcast. But uh, we won't be doing that. We will be doing comedy, and we will be doing Game the Gamer at Zenkai Con. So Zenkai Con is one of our favorite cons to do, uh, mostly because I like to sneak away and eat shoe fly pie down in Lancaster. It's my favorite. 
But uh, come see us at ZenkaiCon. We don't have a schedule yet. Uh, we just know what we're doing, and I have permission to say what I just said and nothing more. So come see us at ZenkaiCon. It's at the Lancaster Convention Center, and the dates of that are May 4th through the 6th. Oh, may the 4th be with you. Who knew? So uh, on Star Wars Day, why don't you come to ZenkaiCon? And uh, now that I've brought that up, let's talk a little bit about Cosplay Pro Wrestling. Cosplay Pro Wrestling has been a joy for us. This is something that we've fallen into. And uh, while we we always joke about kayfabe, which is protecting the legitimacy of the business of wrestling. Uh, so we, we always joke around that we're not really the characters we are, but of course we are. Uh, we love doing Cosplay Pro Wrestling, and Cosplay Pro Wrestling has had a beautiful chance to grow. And... Uh, We'd like to thank all the people that share it. Uh, we've had a lot of really good press about Cosplay Pro Wrestling. Despite, like, we don't have a website or anything like that. We're basically just a Facebook page and a Twitter account at this point. Uh, because wrestling's insane. Uh, so, <laughs> thank you to all the people that share it. We, we got a retweet from CM Punk. Like, that's insane. Uh, so it is literally one of my favorite things to do. It is so much work to get done. I'm currently working on editing stuff. I know that we haven't updated the YouTube in a while. I'm going to get to it, I promise you. But it's super fun. Thank you so much for supporting Cosplay Pro Wrestling. Uh, and if you want to see it at, at a convention, if you want to see us at a convention, this is something that uh, I feel like people miss. It is much easier for us to get booked somewhere if you ask the con, if you ask us, we don't have any power. But if you go to a con, and you're like, yo, these guys are great. Bring them in. There's a better chance that they'll do it. So always ask the con you want to see us at instead of asking us. <laughs> uh, because we would love to be everywhere. Uh, we, we love doing cosplay pro wrestling. It's expensive, so it's a little harder to get booked. But man, do we love doing it. So thank you so much for coming out for all that good stuff. Uh, and I forgot to bring this up when we're talking about cons, so I'll I'll link it this way. The first ever cosplay pro wrestling show was, of course, at Katori Con, and uh, I received a couple angry messages that I was not at Katori Con. Let me take this time to tell you I love Katori Con. Katori Con is one of our first cons that uh, we really had a good relationship with. Uh, Katori Con booked us their first year, uh, I think, with like two weeks' notice. I just sent them an email. I was like, hey, I just found out about your con. You're down the street from my house. Please book us. And they were nice enough to do that. They put us after Uncle Yo. That was the start of Uncle Yo and uh, our relationship in being friendly. So uh, we owe a lot to Katori Khan. And uh, we've always hung out with Katori Khan folks. Uh, there's a video that unfortunately will never see the light of day where we went to anime next back when they were in King of Prussia. And we just hang out with the Katori Khan table and we argue about Donkey Kong Country for like 10 minutes. Uh, unfortunately, the audio is garbage, so it wasn't usable. But we've always loved Katori Khan. And I understand completely uh, why I received a picture of an audience of people giving me the finger for not being there. I understand. Please don't take it personally. <laughs> I love you guys. I wish I could have been there. Uh, unfortunately, we double booked ourselves, and uh, I ended up at MAGFest. And uh, I love MAGFest as well. It's also a good time. I wish you guys weren't the same weekend. There was the original plan of doing both. We had done both the year before. And uh, due to snow, like it just wasn't feasible this year. So, sorry guys. Know that I love you. Uh, I'll make it up to you next year. I'll try. I'm sorry guys. I really am. So I wanted to get that out of the way about Katori Khan. Back to wrestling. Uh, there's a joke that we, we tend to do on the podcast whenever we have a Chikari guy on that uh, I have a friend named Scott Holiday that's involved in Chikara. And I'm tired of this, this joke now, mostly because I'm tired of people who are fans of mine at conventions rolling up to me going, dude, Noah, do you watch Chikara? There's a guy who looks just like you. It's like, yeah, it's me. So, uh, I, I enjoy my time being Scott Holiday. That's why, if I've never made this clear, <laughs> like, I feel like there's people that are legit confused, because I always say I'm not Scott Holiday, and I mean it as a joke, and I think people are just believing the bit. 
But Chikara has become a, a major part of my life, and it is a fantastic part of my life. And Chikara is uh, pro wrestling at its funnest. I don't, I don't care that that's not a word. But Chikara is something very special in my eyes uh, because it's about fun and it's uh, a more innocent version of wrestling. I've been involved in wrestling for, wow, I was going to say seven years, but it's my birthday. I bet it's longer than that now. Hmm. Uh, (laughs) But for quite some time and uh, pro wrestling tends to have a grime on it, the film of grime. Uh, I've seen a lot of bad things in my time of pro wrestling. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story because... Stories are important to break up the rambling. Uh, I used to work for a wrestling company that I will not name, even though I'm pretty sure they're dead. But in any case, where uh, one of my favorite teams in it, uh, we were having this great match. I was the ring announcer at the time. And uh, one of the team members suffered a concussion and had to quit wrestling. And it's like, oh, that's a bummer. He was a very talented man. That's such a shame. And then we had to have an emergency meeting the next day. And I was surprised that I had to be there. But they were like, it's required that all staff are there. And I showed up, and there was about eight of us. So I don't know why. That's not everybody, but whatever. Eight eight of us are there. So I somehow got a vote in a decision that had to be made. Turns out the reason he got a decision is he was drinking before the match. And we had to have a vote on whether or not we would continue to drink backstage before a wrestling show. And the whole time, I was just like, why are we, why is this even a discussion? Why, why, you're, you're gonna trust someone with your body who's drunk. Why would you do that? There should not be alcohol backstage. And we argued for a while, and uh, what we voted on was that there would no longer be alcohol in the locker room. Instead, if you're gonna drink do it in your car beforehand. Like, that was an official rule, was drink in your car. Like, I couldn't think of a worse rule, so I was just like, I don't need to be part of a business that does stuff like this. Uh, Chikara is pretty grime-free. Uh, we just had National Pro Wrestling Day, which raised over $1,000 to Puerto Rican relief for, because of the hurricane. I forgot the name of the charity. I'm sorry. I'm such a good ring announcer. <laughs> I know all these details. But we plug Chikara a lot on uh, the podcast because now I know all these people and I can bring them on the show. And like I said, I tried no repeat guests. So (laughs) now I have a new slew of people to bring on. Uh, I love Chikara. And if you want to check it out, subscribe to them on YouTube. There's a lot of good stuff there. But if you want the full experience, be sure to check out Chikaratopia.com. You get a free week trial. I know it sounds like a commercial, but it's worth it. Try it for a week, and you'll want to watch it forever. It's super fun. It's the Jakar Lucha Super Party. See, I got all these things ingrained in my brain now because I work there. I have all the the plugs. (laughs) You know, be sure to check out Podcast Agogo every Monday because it's free match Monday over at the Jakara Facebook page. No, I'm sorry, the Jakara YouTube page. All right, maybe it's not ingrained. (laughs) But, uh, yes, I am Scott Holliday. Thank you to all the people. You tell me about the handsome man that now works at Chikara that looks like me. It is me. It's super fun. Come on down to the Wrestle Factory. It is a great time. And that brings me to my next point. There's a lot of people who ask how they can get involved in cosplay pro wrestling. And the answer to that question is, you got to be a wrestler. Uh, it happens a lot at the, the event where the show will be going on and a cosplayer will will like wander backstage like are you guys good or do you need someone else to jump in there uh no <laughs> you're not going to jump in there uh we have had a few wrestlers uh reach out to us and want to get involved and they did that through our facebook page and that's probably the best way to do it so if you're interested be sure to do that but whatever you do don't do the thing where it's like i'm not a cosplayer but i think i could bring a lot to this it's like no cosplay is the first word it's uh, it's cosplay pro wrestling. So ha- show us the costume and, and your wrestling skills. Both are important. Uh, if you want to get involved, I recommend taking some wrestling training. Uh, I've said many times that uh, I've learned a lot of skills in my, my day. You know, I have some wrestling skills. I have some announcing skills. 
Uh, I took a few circus classes, so I'm actually I'm decent on a unicycle. I'm decent on stilts. Uh, I've I tried plate spinning, but I'm not great at it. I can do it like I don't know, maybe forty five percent of the time. I have very light juggling skills. I have very light lock picking skills. That's another thing I picked up at Mag Labs. Uh, I've always said there's never been a time in my life where I thought to myself, man, I wish I hadn't learned a skill. Things would be so much better if I hadn't learned this super, this stupid skill. No, always learn a skill. So I've always said that everyone should try comedy and everyone should try wrestling. Everyone should just do it once. And that's something you can do at the Chikara Wrestle Factory. We have actual free uh, workshops that a lot of people are signing up for this upcoming one. Let me actually pull up the details for that. But if you ever wanted to just step in the ring and, you know, know what it's like to fall on that mat or or just be in between those ropes, it's it really is a special feeling. So I highly recommend that everyone just give it a try. And if you go to the Russell Factory website, which it might sound like I'm trying to find right now on my computer, and you'd be right. There is a Saturday afternoon training spot coming up. And by Saturday, I mean Sunday afternoon training spot on April 8th. It is 100% free. The workshop is from 1 to 2.30, but it's only open to 24 spots. And I currently have already gotten three of my friends, maybe four, someone's on the fence, to sign up for this. So it might just be a plus two comedy party if you show up to this one because I've just been telling everyone to go do this one. It's super fun. Everyone should try it once. And, you know, you get to hang out with wrestlers and kind of get that experience. It's not the NXT power plant experience, but it's the Wrestle Factory experience, and it's pretty good. Go to com slash workshop.html and uh, sign up today. It's super fun. That's how I got it started, or restarted after my first run in wrestling, was I went to one of the free workshops, and then I ended up doing a scholarship challenge, and I lost to Travis Huckabee. You can check that out in our previous episode. And then they had another one, and I won, and I I got more training under my belt, and it felt really good. So give it a shot. Check out the Chikara Wrestle Factory. I didn't mean for this episode to just be commercial, but I kind of just sat down after eating breakfast and was like, crap, I need to put up an episode today. So I'm just going to sit here and ramble. (laughs) So here we are. I'm sitting here and I'm rambling. It's going pretty well. I must say it's going really, really well. Uh, This is probably something I should have brought up sooner, but uh, plus two comedy has grown. I don't know. This probably should have been what I opened with, but this is something we've never said officially, but it's official. So we should probably say it. That makes sense, right? Uh, Laura Prince has joined Plus Two Comedy. You may have seen her at MAGFest. You may have seen her at Too Many Games. She hosted uh, our show at Too Many Games. She also runs the improv there. She is a fantastic comedian, a fantastic improver, and a fantastic host. Her hosting skills are off the chart, which is a great thing to have. So welcome, Laura Prince, to the show. Uh, she is our research department over at the Plus Two Comedy Podcast, and uh, it was about time that we gave her a official role. So, we talked for a while who will be the third man to join Plus Two Comedy after we've lost TJ and we've lost Vegas. Uh, that third man is a lady, and her name is Laura Prince. So... That's who you'll see if you book Plus Two Comedy these days is the three of us or a mix of the two of us because we get split up a lot because we're getting double booked all the time. Guys, cons, get together and figure it out. Stop putting cons over each other. You're just stealing your own audience away from each other. We got a weekend coming up where there are three cons in the same like weekend span, and I think we're doing all three. Uh, I'm not positive, but I think we are. <laughs> Again, things I can't talk about yet. But some iteration of what we do, whether it be comedy or wrestling, is doing something on a weekend where there's a lot of cons. There, breaking vague news here on the Plus Two Comedy Podcast. Uh, Another thing that we super need to talk about that I haven't talked about in nearly a while, I have to shoot a video today 
to update people about this because it's been too long. We got to talk about Game the Gamer. Game the Gamer is, of course, the plus two comedy game show that is similar but legally distinct from Cutthroat Kitchen in which we have four competitors play three video games and sabotage each other in the attempt to win money. It's a fantastic show. I love doing it so much, and we have been doing it. We have four of the ten new episodes filmed. Uh, We ran into some problems with the studio and getting time to get in there. Uh, We also, for some stupid reason, thought we could film two episodes a day, and we cannot. It's a long process. I know it only comes out to be 42 minutes or something like that. Usually it's over a half hour, but under an hour every time we do one of these things. Uh, But we shoot for, I don't know, six hours usually. Uh, For those of you wondering the process of making this game show, uh, I write everything. And I know writing for a game show sounds weird, but basically I have to sit down, hook up all my video game systems, make sure that I can capture the footage because some systems are a pain in the ass. I'm not sure if you know that. Uh, I've had a lot of problem with the Playstations, uh, specifically the three and the four. Uh, the four we have done some stuff. The third I had to buy different cables for because it's a pain. But I have to make sure all that works and then I have to make sure that all the sabotages I have work. Whether it's these weird controllers that I've bought or weird things that people are going to have to wear. I have to make sure all that stuff works. Then, on top of that, i got to make sure that not only does it work, but it's possible. It's super fun to hand someone, like, a drum controller and say, hey, beat Super Mario Brothers. But if it's impossible, (laughs) that's not good TV. That's not good internet content. So everything that you see on the show, I have successfully done at least once. Uh, maybe not with the greatest of ease or the greatest success rate, but the thing that I'm asking our competitors to do is all doable. So it spends a lot of time of me just like, all right, this is too hard. You know, let's, uh, we can't hang them upside down and put wa- and waterboard them. It, we can, <laughs> it's just too much if they're being waterboarded. We're going to have to just hang them upside down. So things like that I have to, you know, test over and over and over again. So then once we actually get to the show, uh, showtime starts, or arrival for me, starts usually around 9 a.m. And that's setting the stage, setting up cameras, setting up lights, setting up the props, you know, getting everything started. Uh, Crew, or cast, or contestants, whatever you want to call them, they usually show up at 11, and then we have to mic them, and light them, and make sure everything is good, explain the rules to them, uh... Large amount of contestants don't want to bother to watch the show first. They just show up. I've had quite a few people, I'm not going to name names, show up and think they're doing stand-up comedy. I know a lot of comedians. And are completely baffled when it turns out they're on a game show. Ugh, I just want to strangle them. Also, a lot of people thought filming it in my basement, not in a studio. They're like, your house is weird. In any case, uh, they get in, so we're not filming starting the cameras until about noon. Then it takes roughly an hour, maybe an hour and a half, to film the actual game show. Uh, Usually it takes an hour to do the game show at a con. Uh, It takes a little bit longer because there's a few things we have to do pickup shots for and things like that. So it takes an hour, hour and a half to do that. Then we get lunch. Everybody gets fed. Get some nice za in us. Uh, So then around 2 o'clock we do the confessionals, the talking heads, the things that you see in a reality show where it's someone talking to the camera like, yo, I hate Billy. Billy sucks. That stuff. We have to do that for all of them. Uh, That usually takes about 4 hours. We're not done till 6, 7 o'clock because we have to go through every element of the show and just be like, so, tell me, what you think about that controller with no B button? Hmm? What you think? Tell me how you felt about it. All right, cool. So we have to do that with every single person that's on the show. So we're usually not done till 6, 7, and then we have to clean everything up. So I'm usually not leaving till 9 o'clock. So that's 12 hours in the studio to do one episode of uh, the Plus 2 Comedy game, The Gamer. And on top of that, 
Not sure if you guys, you guys are my audience, so you probably have, have been paying attention to YouTube. The show that we are creating is no longer practical for YouTube. Uh, basically, by the time that we'll be able to get monetized, we'll probably be three or four episodes deep. So half the season will go unmonetized. And then on top of that, uh, because the show will only come out once a week, we will not be trending enough or create enough content to be featured by YouTube. So we'll just get buried. So what I recommend to you is that you go and you subscribe to Plus Two Comedy Gaming right now on YouTube. Because if you don't, you'll never see the show. (laughs) Because YouTube is doing everything in its power to make it difficult for this to become a thing that people enjoy. So that's what I recommend you do right now. So we've talked a lot about whether or not we're doing a season two. Season two looks unlikely (laughs) at this time. Uh, It's weird to be able to say that before episode one actually debuts. Uh, But it's going to have to do unbelievably well to finance another episode. Uh, Episodes are very expensive. If you're not familiar with what happened at our Kickstarter video and stuff like that, it takes about $500 to film an episode of the show with prize money, sabotages, lunches, games, all that stuff. It, it, It averages about $500 an episode. So that's what we're working on. So I know a lot of people are like, where's Game the Gamer? Where is it? It's being built, it's just taking some time. Uh, but thank you for caring. Thank you for not being like, ah, I guess it's not happening. I like the fact that you were demanding it because we want to make it for you. We like knowing that there are people who want to watch this show. That's what helps us keep going. So it's coming, I promise you. Uh, and as always, feel free to hit us up on Messenger about it and uh, you know, give us your ideas. That's always cool too. Uh, and finally, in closing, because uh, I've been rambling for, how long have I been rambling What's my, my what's my ramble time here on the <laughs> Bless You County by over a half hour. That's good enough. Uh if you have not uh liked us on Facebook, uh right now I do this every year in between Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. That time frame doesn't matter, but that's why where it is in my mind. Where we do a tournament and you vote on the winners based on who you think would win in a fight and this uh Tournament is based on war, so it's a bunch of different armies that are facing off for your votes to be crowned the greatest army in all of fiction. We've already had some fantastic battles. Let's uh, do a quick recap here. Uh, The Empire has beaten the Kiss Army. The Locust from Independence Day were defeated by the Locust from Gears of War. The Reapers have taken out the army of darkness full of deadites. And ooh, there's one going on right now. It's the Colonial Marines versus the League of Shadows. So we have the Alien franchise facing off against the Batman franchise. Who will win in this battle? Only your votes will decide. There's 32 armies involved in this. The X-Men are there. The NWO. Bowser's army. The Daleks. The Zerg. Dumbledore's army. The Green Lantern Corp. Cobra. They're all battling for your vote. So be sure to check out Plus Two Comedy's Facebook page and vote for your favorite army. Yet another plug here on the solo episode of the Plus Two Comedy Podcast. Thank you so much for listening on my birthday. I greatly appreciate it. And thank you to Net Neutrality for still existing and making the show possible. This was a solo episode of the Plus Two Comedy Podcast. Thank you so much for listening.